Hey guys, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Andre Sigurds, and this time we're joined by Derek Bindner to discuss all the latest updates for Smash Bros. Wii U and 3DS from this past week. So let's get started. Alright, Derek, uh, we may have a record here in terms of this perhaps being the most boring weeks of all time. Um, or at least since we started doing these discussions. <laughs> no, you're right. It's been abysmal, really, as far as interesting information. Yeah, this is all interesting stuff on a basic <laughs> level, but nothing to get you really excited. And it makes me wonder, it's like, are we being punished for those leaks? <laughs> that sh it kind of seems that way, right? Uh, it does! Yeah. I mean, this has been one of the, as you said, one of the worst weeks we've ever had as far as interesting information. It's just been menus. Yep. And it's like, man, Sakurai must be angry. This is his disappointed face. <laughs> we've angered the gods, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, launch into Monday here, which actually might be one of the relatively more interesting ones. And that's the fact that we get a better idea of how Classic Mode is going to work. Now, we actually saw a little glimpse of this before in the E3 trailer, and it appears you'll be able to choose multiple routes in Classic Mode, uh, you know, with different stages happening depending on which route you take. And not only that, but it mixes in a uh, Kid Icarus Uprising style uh, gambling system, where you can choose how hard the game is by risking more gold, and you'll be rewarded with, uh, you know, more rewards if you do well. Which is a very different, you know, way of doing things, uh, you know, as far as Smash Brothers is concerned. So what do you think about this? I really love the change. We talked about this a little bit before when we had an idea of this is how it was going to work. And, you know, as soon as I saw that this was a nice, easy way, relatively, as far as the difficulty is concerned, uh, to earn more coins in order to get tro more trophies, I was all for mm -hmm. it. This is, like, it's always been just sort of mind-numbing trying to earn trophies just you know by your in single player multiplayer it's not too bad because you're having fun with your friends anyway so you get those those coins anyway but single player has just been mind-numbing at, at points and it's so nice to see that here and the system you know will provides challenge it's not just you know very easy easy normal hard very hard it's actually something a little bit more intuitive and allows you to really play with the system and uh, and i love the multiple routes i mean you can choose who you want to fight against so you're not fighting the same people over and over again it actually reminds me a little bit of the find me quest you know in uh, street pass plaza where you can choose which route you want and then you add on to that um, you know, the Kid Icarus system. I think, yeah, I think this is all really cool because I actually, I've always really enjoyed the classic mode of Smash Brothers. I just like going through, you know, the campaign, um, you know, taking on the random challenges they throw your way. And uh, the, the main problem with that, though, is that they got a little bit repetitive, you know, especially because the game usually forces you to play through them multiple times, you unlock all the characters or whatnot. And every time it was basically the same. But this time, you know, by being able to adjust the difficulty by gambling how much you want to risk, and uh, also choosing multiple routes. It really seems like it'll just be mixing it up a lot. And I think that's pretty cool. And in, and building on all these multiple routes, Sakar even mentions at the end that Master Hand is waiting for you, or maybe something a little bit different if you raise the intensity. And what I'm wondering, <laughs> what could that be? <laughs> Well, I mean, the most obvious thing that comes to mind is the uh, is Crazy Hand, of yep, course. Right. Or maybe Master Hand and Crazy Hand at the same time. It makes sense because that's what we've always fought before. But if we're going to go really crazy, and we've already seen references to the Subspace Emissary and uh, Smash Run, maybe if you crank it up to the max difficulty, Taboo will show up. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. That'd be a neat throwback, and it actually would make a lot of sense. But who knows, it could be something completely out of left field too. Maybe a brand new enemy we've never seen before. <laughs> That'd be cool. Moving on to Tuesday, we get confirmation that the 3DS version of Smash Brothers is getting a spectator mode. And you'll be able to watch basically random people around the world play Smash Brothers, which is kind of cool in and of itself. But on top of that, you'll actually be able to place bets onto these players onto who will win. And you'll actually be able to see things such as like the win and loss ratio, uh, the odds of them winning the fight, what fighters they'll be playing as, what stage they'll be playing on. I just think that's really cool, actually. Like, I think it'll be fun to just hop online, check out some random matches, and uh, yeah, and this could be just a fun way of earning, just earning coins. Well, yeah, it's always fun for people to watch, like, high try to watch high level play, and to, you know, bet on their, or maybe they'll get to watch your friends and bet on who they're playing, because let's say you're having. Let's say you want to play with the friends online, but you only have, but you have like six friends. Mm -hmm. So two of you can bet on who's going to win. Right. And it'd be really fun to just sort of mix it up that way. 
And, you know, it's nice to see that, you know, if in four-person matches, even first and second place do get a bit of a prize Mm -hmm. based on who wins. But the most interesting thing about this entire setup to me is the when it lists the stage because it says gerudo valley omega form right and i may it makes me wonder is like okay is that the official term for the final destination form of of stages that's a good one i mean i i feel like it almost has to be because i don't know what else that would refer to and it makes sense that they you know that they could use a just a simple symbol to display what the the stage type um, as opposed to having to write final destination or fd for instance um, mm-hmm. I think it makes a lot more sense to basically have a different category for that instead of referring to them all as like the Final Destination form. Yeah, it definitely makes the most sense. And, you know, this isn't super exciting, but it's nice to know it's there and that you can, you know, have some fun watching other people play. Yep. But I think actually the more interesting thing about this, besides this mode specifically, is just the fact that it goes to show, like, just really like how robust they're trying to make the online this time. Mm-hmm. I mean, just the fact alone that you'll be able to watch random people playing suggests to me that they may be using more than just a, uh, this is getting a little bit technical, but more than just a peer-to-peer system. Um, like, I'm wondering if these will be actually be streaming off, like, Nintendo servers, for instance. Because I don't know the 3DS itself is capable of handling, you know, not just connecting to the three other players, but just random people as well, you know, who want to log in and watch a game. So I feel like Nintendo might be going really far more robust with the online for this game than they did with Brawl, or really most other online games at this point. God, I hope so. <laughs> this game, yeah, that's my big, always been my biggest fear is please let let the online be much much smoother mm-hmm. than Brawl. If they can nail the online, this game, you know, gets a pass from me because everything I've seen so far looks to play great. Yeah. So just give me the grit going online, and I'm 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 completely sold and completely happy with this product. <laughs> that's exactly it. That, that really is the main question at this point. Is online going to work? And God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to Wednesday, we get a look at the challenge mode, which basically appears to function just as it has in past games, or, you know, like Brawl, where there's a grid and you unlock, you know, challenges on it, and when you beat that challenge, it will unlock the challenges surrounding that grid, and you can partake in those challenges as well. So it's basically, this is Nintendo's version of achievements, right? But in Smash Brothers, you get direct rewards for unlocking them. Um, in fact, on this bottom screen here, we can see that they unlocked, apparently, a Xerneas. And you can see that the challenge was to play Target Blast for the first time, so that seemed like a pretty easy one. And speaking of easy, Sakurai notes that apparently all the 3DS challenges are on the easy side, whereas the Wii U version might be a little bit tougher, which is kind of interesting. I wonder why they would make that, that you know, draw that divide there. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly, but maybe it's... But you know why? Because one version of it actually controls really well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, well, I'm just happy that you can adjust what the buttons will be so I can at least get a, an approximation of a GameCube controller. But anyway, uh, no, I mean, it's it's great to see that they're uh, bringing these challenges back. I love having you know extra things to do. It makes you try out some of the other modes and do that sort of thing. You know, it's it's not bad at all. It makes me wonder what he means by trickier because, you know, but going by this, it's just try out this mode uh, how, and do it how many times. So what makes them trickier? What will it actually be? Challenges, or we try to have to do some sort of trick-based thing? And I'm not, I'm it's no way to tell, of course. Mm-hmm. But uh, it also confirms that these games are, you know, not alike, and that you can get both and not have to worry about the same content right. exactly for both sides, especially with the challenges, because you've already done these challenges once. Why would you want to do them again? I guess it's kind of a pro and a con, right? Like it is nice that you don't have to play through the exact same challenges. With that said, do you really want to play through however many hundreds of challenges they have between both of these games? <laughs> like, I mean, I feel like, you know, once I play through all the 3DS ones, do I really want to do, like, similar things again in, you know, the Wii U version? I don't know. I don't mind it so much because it is different. But, I mean, did you even did you even unlock all of them in Brawl? Like, I didn't. I got close. Right. I got close at least because this is the stuff I really enjoy because I was unlocking I love unlocking stuff, and if it's reasonable to do, or at least you know possible to do without it being you know hair poolingly difficult, I, I I did it. I just love playing Smash Brothers so much that I will play through every mode, unlock everything I can. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not limited to just the versus mode, so I appreciate stuff like this, and I am one that will actually do that kind of stuff. Now there are just a couple more things I wanted to point out here. Uh, one, we can see that the mallet or hammer returns on the menu, like so you'll earn those periodically. And that should allow you to instantly basically beat a challenge. You can just unlock that square and get whatever its reward is. Now, I could be mistaken here, but as I remember correctly in Brawl, on this grid, or on the, you know, on the surrounding um, challenges you've unlocked, 
you could see what the reward was behind the glass, you know, whether it was like a soundtrack or a trophy or what or whatever. And that doesn't look to be the case here. So I wonder if you can actually see what the reward is ahead of time this time. I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, you could, it was nice that you could play in your route, like, okay, I want to unlock all the soundtracks. So right. Look, just go for all this uh, CD. Which is what I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's also just nice to, you know, like I said, I love a good surprise. I love to see, like, okay, what will this unlock? And if it's something, you know, it feels good when you get something decent. Either way, I don't mind, because either way I can, like, either play my route and get what I want, or I can be have just the fun of seeing what I'll get next. Yep, that's basically it. <laughs> All right, moving on to Thursday. We get a look at the customization screen in which you'll use to you know, outfit your fighter in different ways, like with equipment for Smash Run, you can change their headgear, their specials, their outfit, their powers, all that good stuff. Um, really, stuff we've we've already largely known about. <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really all it is. It's just like okay, here's what it looks like, and it's just sort of like ah, oh, thanks Sakurai. That's 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 so interesting. Uh, no, there. I mean, there's yeah, there's interesting stuff, I guess, that you can kind of point out. Yeah, you got the whole example of. Of this me can have 17 of has a carrying capacity of seven of 19 and has used up 17 of it when it comes to her uh, right. comes to her items. I mean, this is where of course you'll customize your specials that you use. Um, that's all interesting, and I do like the fact that there is uh, in the upper right there you can test out the builds and see if this is really what you want to use. You don't have to just select this uh, setup go into Smash Run and find out, oh god, this was a horrible choice and get destroyed for the next five minutes. So I do like the fact that there is a test and it's even nice to see that um, there's a little button there that looks like you can even rotate your character and get a nice 360 view of what they look like. So there, there's nice touches here, but it's not exactly exciting. Right, it's not exciting, but it is. It, there is a lot of information here and it seems like there, it's going to be a pretty robust area to go to. And it's kind of interesting, I was looking at the bomb screen there and looking at like the pros and cons or rather the like descriptions and it looks like in this case like there's no respawn invincibility for this character and uh, but they get improved attack powers in a crisis which i guess means when they're like maybe high in health or you know, high in damage about 300 percent or something maybe so yeah i guess you know that's based on the equipment you equip and i was going to ask you since you did our smash run analysis um are these new like have we seen these items before or these uh you know equip and or the powers on the right side? No, not really. It looks like there's like a boomerang there. One looks like the power bomb, and the, of course there's the boomerang, which we know is an item. Yeah, you know, we are getting a bit more varieties of what they are. It's your basic equipment screen, and this is yeah you know, how it's all set up for Smash. The one thing I find kind of amusing in a way, and I just kind of thought about this, is that this is kind of a it, it, this is a more elaborate setup for customizing and equipping your characters than the sticker system in Subspace Emissary. You just blew my mind there, dude. I don't know if I actually knew that. <laughs> I played all <laughs> the way through Subspace, probably a couple times. I It could just be that I've forgotten. I'd have to go back and look at my... Uh, I did a guide for IGN. It'd be kind of embarrassing if I missed that detail <laughs> when I was describing <laughs> Subspace. I have no recollection of that, but that's kind of an interesting uh, thing you just pointed out. Yeah, each of the uh, characters, the character stickers you had locked would have increased, like, increase your speed. You know, the basic kind of stuff that we've seen here. Except in Subspace Emissary, it wasn't really necessary. Right. I mean, it, it would help. It would You could definitely see an effect by it. But you know, oh, you were limited by, of course, the bigger stickers would be more uh, be more effective in whatever stat they improved. However, they took up more space, so you only had so much space to actually use it on. So it's actually a very similar system to this, except better expanded, and uh, you know, it takes the actual individual characters into account as far as how many powers and uh, how much power, how many powers and equipment you mm -hmm. can have. I just found it interesting. That is interesting. But I've got something that could blow that out of the water. And this is from uh, Michael Bromery, who tweeted this at me, actually. So I wish I could get the credit for it, but I can't. <laughs> um, he noted that if you look at the order of the menu there, like the uh, equipment, specials, headgear, outfit, and powers, if you take mm -hmm. the first letter of each one, it spells eShop. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's weird. Isn't that weird? It means nothing, but it's still <laughs> it's a fun. It's a really funny Easter egg. Right, yeah, it means nothing at all, but it is, it is kind of cool, like... Did they plan that? Or, yeah, I don't know. But, yeah. It, it's subliminal message, messaging. <laughs> no, they're going to have, is, uh, uh, what's that, what is it called? Microtransactions. Right, this is a they're hint. They're going to buy the headgear and all this exactly. stuff. Exactly. This is, this is a precursor <laughs> to, uh, yeah, to outfitting your character with new, like, downloadable, paid-for items. <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving on to Friday. Uh, <laughs> Sakurai capped off the week, or so we thought, with uh, another 
kind of unexciting picture, uh, this time showing off what he calls the mysterious fighting teams that appear in Smash Brothers, which is, in this case, a part of, what, multi-man uh, melee, right? Mm -hmm. um, basically replacing the fighting po polygon team, I believe, from previous Smash Brothers. Uh, but this time, they use your, you know, me characters uh, taken from your system, which is kind of cool, I guess. It's something everybody expected. It's yeah. not exactly mind-blowing at all, but, you know, it's it's kind of cool. And the other thing that kind of freaks me out about this picture what? is that I swear to God, the gunner me there looks so much like my dad, it's scary. That, that is, I don't know your dad, but even that kind of frightens <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, the fact that they pulled that out and just random creation, it kind, and it kind of looks like my dad. It's like, it's not exact, of course, but it, the resemblance is there. I'm like, oh, that's freaky. It's <laughs> that, just a little bit disconcerting. Yeah, just uh, a bit. <laughs> Sakurai kind of cheated today, though. Because he made a massive announcement that Shulk is coming to, uh, that you know, Shulk is officially coming to Smash Brothers, even though we already kind of knew that. He cheated because he added the second post of the, you know, pick of the day. Um, now, you've already talked about this extensively uh, with Chris <laughs> earlier today, so I don't know if there's really that much to add. I mean, you know, we, we have, you know, we have the planes level coming to the system, we know about Shulk. Um, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, th there's not a whole lot to add. I mean, the only thing here, of course, we start out this whole discussion saying that there's not a whole lot to say about this week. And if it was just a multiplayer man at the end of the week, it really would have been that way. It would have been a terrible it's, week, yeah. It would have been just a very dull week. But Shulk saves the day, and, you know, I've talked about him a lot today between the direct discussion with Ash, the Shulk d dedicated discussion with uh, Chris, right. and now finally here with you. And the only thing I can say is just like, I, the only thing I think I have not mentioned yet is I love his old costume. I think it's so funny, uh, which is his, like, he's stripped down to his boxers, mm. which is something you can do in the game because if, every new piece of equipment you add to him gets affected to your character. And if I you unequip everything, they're down to their boxers. So I thought that was a nice, uh, cheeky way of, uh, you know, having him, having an old costume for him. And it's kind of funny. And uh, I don't know, I, I, I kind of really enjoyed that. But. I, I'm kind of curious what you thought of this whole uh, reveal because I know you've not really played Xenoblade before. You're not really much of an RPG guy as far as I'm aware. So, I don't know, what's your take on this character that you really have no interest in appearing in Smash? Well, my take is exactly what it was when we talked about during one of our um, previous discussions like about uh, Gematsu. Like, I think it's a good addition. Like, it's adding, you know, another IP to the game. Um, which one a lot of people wanted to see, even if I personally don't have any, you know, vested interest in this character by virtue of not having not played his game. Um, I think it's a good addition. And, uh, you know, I didn't find this surprising at all because I totally believe the leak that came out. So, <laughs> um, so this is a reconfirmation of what I already knew. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, you know, I like what they're doing with him here based on what we can see uh, in the uh, in the update and based on what we've seen in the leaked footage. Yeah, so I mean, I think this is a net positive. I think this is good. Now I just want, I'm just waiting for the Duck Hunt dog trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes you wonder what the tra that trailer is going to be like because it, it, uh, Shulk's reveal is kind of unique in the, fa the fact that it revealed no other fighters. Yeah, um, it didn't. But we did get another uh, unofficially announced fighter today, though. <laughs> yeah, we did. A lot of people been asking us to comment on this and that was that five minute video that was released on the Japanese uh, Nintendo channel basically just giving a rundown of the game people looked closely and they saw that well on the off screen indicator showed Ganondorf yep so he's back which big surprise there he was also part of the leak but I mean it's it's cool we have him in here we're getting a much better idea of how the game plays and I know it looks like he takes after his Twilight Princess form and will pro likely play mostly the same if I had to guess anything. But we have to wait and see. Well, they, they, there's a chance, you know, they with Brawl, they did take the chance to uh, make a lot of the clones play differently. They could continue that, maybe make them even play, you know, even more differently yet, which would be really cool. Yeah, that, that'd be the hope. But yeah, it was not a very exciting start of the week, but I think it ended well and it was a nice reward, you know, for being patient with all these menus and stuff that we got. Yeah, that's absolutely the case. All right, well, I think that wraps up our Smash Brothers discussion this week, so thanks guys for watching. Um, if you like our discussion, make sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at GameExplained, which you can find links to in the description below. It's a good way to keep up to date on everything we post. And of course, keep an eye on GameExplained.com for more on Smash Brothers Wii U and 3DS, uh, eventually, <laughs> and other things gaming as well. All right, thanks guys. Bye.